What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafter Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this really simple but kind of modern looking baby gate or, <laughs> or it could be a pet gate for this little dude. This is my son, Johnny. We just moved to a new house. We've got a very steep set of stairs here leading up to the second level and needed something to keep him from going down the stairs basically because he is, as you can see, super mobile. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I also wanna say a quick shout out to Simply Safe, the sponsor of this week's video. I'll talk about them more later, but uh, let's go ahead and get started with the project. So this project wasn't something I was planning on building, but it shot to the top of my to-build list when my wife and I recently moved into a new house. Now this new place has a super steep set of stairs that leads up to the second level. And with my little dude being super mobile now, we really needed something to keep him from taking a tumble down those stairs. Whoa. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if you've looked at the options out there, but most baby or pet gates aren't exactly what I'd consider stylish, and they're generally pretty flimsy feeling. And I figured I could do better, so I modeled up a quick design and got to work. So the first thing to work on was this mounting block, which I needed to add so that I could mount the gate square to the top of the steps without it interfering with the railing. And this was basically just a big chunk of wood, and the cheapest big piece of wood I could come up with was a southern yellow pine 4x4 sandwiched between a few pieces of poplar 1x4s. After cutting the pieces to size of the miter saw, I ran the 4x4 pieces over the jointer and planer just to flatten them out a little bit, but this was really an optional step and wouldn't have been necessary if I found some better quality 4x4s. So with the pieces flattened, I glued up the four pieces into one big chunk, and I made sure to keep the pieces aligned when clamping everything together, although I did leave the pieces a little bit oversized so that I could trim them to final size later on. Also, the piece with the angle cut on the end is where this block meets up with the baseboard trim, and that angled cut matches the baseboard. So after the glue dried, I removed the clamps and went back to the jointer to flatten the block. Again, if you don't have a jointer, you could just skip plane this piece with a planer, or even just belt sand it smooth. It really doesn't need to be perfectly flat, as the gate hardware I used has a ton of adjustability in case things are slightly off. Once the piece was nice and flat, I trimmed it to final length at the miter saw, making sure to cut the end with the angled piece to the correct length so that that angle would line up nicely with the baseboard. Next, I laid out the whole locations for these massive structural screws I used to mount the block to the wall. And I of course wanted this gate to be extremely secure, and with three of these screws, the entire wall moves when trying to move this mounting block. And I think realistically, two of these screws would have been more than sufficient here. So I drilled recessed holes for the screws using a Forstner bit, and then drilled a clearance hole most of the way through the block as far as I could get with my longest drill bit, just to make it a little bit easier to drive in those screws. And after drilling the clearance holes, I ran the screws all the way through the back so that any of those splintered pieces that blew out could be removed from the back before painting. And with that, the mounting block was basically done so I could move on to building the gate itself. So this gate is really simple. It's just made up of a bunch of pieces of poplar 1x2s and I cut the pieces to length at the miter saw. And it's a really good idea to set up some kind of stop lock here just to make sure your pieces are nice and consistent. Before assembling the pieces, I had to remove all of these stupid price tags which home centers seem to think should be stuck directly to the faces of boards. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. Even though they leave behind an annoying sticky residue. The assembly process for the gate was super simple. I just glued and screwed the pieces together. I started by attaching the two uprights to the top and bottom slats, and I was extremely careful when doing this, checking for square multiple times. Basically, these first two slats will dictate the position of the rest of the boards and the squareness of the overall gate, so it was really important to get this right. Also, on these first two slats, I tacked the pieces into place temporarily with pin nails just to hold them in place while I checked for square before adding the screws. I wanted all my screw locations to match just for aesthetics, so I measured out the locations before driving in the screws. And also, don't make the same mistake I made here and make the screw locations so close to the ends of the slats that it ends up making them crack. And I could have totally skipped pre-drilling here if I hadn't done that, but because of that, the boards would have split otherwise. I used these small inch and a quarter trim head screws here, which have a really nice finished look, and just worked my way up the gate using a few offcuts of the poplar boards as spacers between each slat. I worked my way from the outside in, which ended up working out really well since the gap for the centermost slat was just ever so slightly bigger than the rest of the slats. I think this was just due to the fact that these boards were just slightly narrower than I had accounted for. 
And by working my way towards the center and leaving that very center board for last, it allowed me to center that last slat in the remaining space, making that slight difference just disappear visually. After getting all the slats added, I needed to add a few extra filler pieces where the hinge hardware mounted, and the screws run right through the center of these hinges into what would have been an empty space between the slats otherwise, so I just glued in a scrap piece of poplar, cut it flush with my flush trim saw, and then flushed up the face with my block plane. And with that, the gate was basically done, so now came the extremely tedious task of getting it ready for finish. So while I'm spending a couple hours sanding, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Simply Safe. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my wife and I just moved into a new house and we've been considering a home alarm system. So we had an alarm system years ago, but the contracts and super high monthly costs caused us to cancel. And that's where I think Simply Safe is really different from their competition, because they've got really fair and honest prices with no contracts or hidden fees. So after researching some other options, I was really drawn to Simply Safe as their system allows you to easily install all of the components yourself. So they sent me the works to try out, including the base station, a wireless keypad, entry sensors, motion sensors, a security camera and video doorbell, plus a bunch of other stuff, and everything was really easy to install and get set up. Best of all, Simply Safe is monitored by professionals 24 7 who will call you in case of an emergency and send police help if needed, and the system will still work if you lose power, Wi Fi, or if the system is attacked. So, to learn more about Simply Safe and see why they're an awesome modern alternative to the traditional alarm system, visit simplysafe.com slash crafted or click the link in the video description below. And thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring this week's video. After sanding the gate, I moved on to getting the mounting block ready for finish, and I filled any knot holes with wood filler and also chamfered the outside edges with my block plane just so they weren't quite so sharp before sanding it up to 180 grit. The last piece to cut and get sanded before finishing was this little length of 2x2, which would be where the gate latch would mount to. For the finish on that mounting piece and the mounting block, I went with a white spray lacquer as I wanted these pieces to blend in with the wall and trim, and I'm really liking this tinted spray lacquer. It's great because it dries super fast and leaves a really nice surface finish. That said, it is lacquer so the fumes are pretty horrendous, so just make sure to spray it in a well-ventilated area with a respirator. For the finish on the gate, I went with a clear spray lacquer, which again sprayed on really nicely but also had some pretty intense fumes. Lacquer also tends to need a lot of thin coats rather than a few heavy coats to build up a nice finish, so try not to get impatient and spray on too much in one coat, otherwise you'll end up with drips that will be a real pain to deal with. Once the finish dried, I could head back to the new house and get the gate installed. First, I attached the mounting block to the wall with those structural screws, making sure I was driving them into a stud. And as you can see, this half wall isn't exactly plumb, so I had to mount the block slightly out of parallel with it, but I really needed the gate to be level in order for it to work properly. Next, I could get the hinges mounted to the gate, and these hinges are meant for an outdoor gate, but they worked just fine indoors, and I actually think they look pretty great. Plus, they automatically close the gate behind you. I first mounted half of the hinge to the gate itself, marking the location, then disassembling the hinge to mount it, and I made sure to pre-drill the holes to avoid splitting and attach the hinge with the included screws. Once the hinge was attached to the gate, I reassembled the hinge and put the gate back in place using a 3 quarter inch thick board below the gate to provide some clearance. I marked the hole locations on the upper hinge, pre-drilled, and then drove in the included screws, then removed the spacer from the bottom and repeated the process on the lower hinge. After attaching the two screws on the front of the hinges, I added the screws through the side of the hinges, opening the gate first to gain access to them. Also, as you can hear, my little dude is not a huge fan of the sound of the impact driver. I'm sorry, bud. Next, I drilled some holes in that mounting board for the latch, first drilling recessed holes for the screw heads, and then drilling the through holes. I then marked out where the piece needed to be mounted on the wall, and then drove in some screws into the wall just to kind of mark the location for the drywall anchors. I removed the piece, then drove in those drywall anchors, and then remounted the piece to the wall. By the way, I'm loving these self-drilling drywall anchors. They're really easy to install, and I don't know how I didn't already know about these. And I'll have links to the ones I used in the video description below, along with all the gate hardware I used, in case you're interested. Next, I installed the latch striker on the gate, and I realized I should have added one more filler block here to allow me to add all of the included screws, but I figured three screws is still plenty strong for this application. With the striker installed, I marked the location for the latch, and then removed the piece from the wall to install the latch, since I couldn't quite get my drill in that tight to the wall. After getting the latch mounted, I could test it out, and luckily it worked pretty much perfectly. 
The last piece to install was this gate stop, which helps keep the gate tight against the latch, making it a little bit harder for any baby fingers to open the gate, and it also fills in some of that gap between that latch mounting board and the gate itself. And once that was installed, I could call this project complete. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way this gate came together. It was a really simple, quick project, but I actually really like the way it looks. This poplar actually turned out super, super nice. It's a wood I don't use very often, but it can have a pretty clean look. If you guys want to learn more about the build and some more kind of detailed dimensions and that type of thing, I will have a build article over on my website with some more of those details. You will have to customize all these dimensions based on your exact kind of setup with your landing and your railing and all that different kind of stuff. Every gate is gonna, I think, be slightly different. I'll also have links in the video description below to all of the hardware that I used, including the finishes, all those different screws, the gate hardware, all that kind of stuff, in case you're interested in checking that out as well. If it's your first time to the channel, go ahead get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also hit that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And last, I have added that YouTube membership functionality to the channel. It allows you to support me a little bit more, get some behind the scenes content and all that kind of stuff. Also last, if you've stuck around here to the very end, I want to announce we have moved houses and that means I'm going to be moving shops here very soon. I'm still actually currently working out of our old house in my old shop. But I've actually found a commercial space really close to this new house that I'm going to be setting up shop in. I'm really excited about that. Hopefully you guys will enjoy some of that shop setup content, getting things dialed in over there. And uh, that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And until next time, happy building.